Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting. It's nice and early in the morning, there's just me and a random kayaker on the wonderful aqueduct. And this is a real time walk and a talk. Hopefully a little bit relaxing, slightly interesting and something for you to just put on in the background whether you're using it to go to sleep or as a video you're genuinely paying attention to. Anyway, I'll hand over to myself just as the sun's about to rise, not that we'd know it. Well my friends, it is a shade before 6.30am, we're here at the edge of the recently reopened Pont Cassafli Aqueduct. The fencing only came down about three days ago and we're here for the second weekend in a row in sync with what should be a beautiful sunrise. But as you may gather from the images on screen right now, the sun is not materialising and instead rather than a beautiful sunrise we're, we're actually glad and feeling quite lucky that we've got away without being rained on so far. So let's have a little wander across the beautiful aqueduct here so you can see what it's like to walk across in real time. Just come up to the edge here you can see again rather than the beautiful golden light of a wintry sunrise we've got probably a certain amount of uh, static and distortion on screen because we haven't quite got even just the basic light to give you the full image quality and here we are we've got a kayaker paddling across the aqueduct if I zoom in you may well see there's that little bit of disturbed water there oh there we go what a beautiful start to the day, sunrise or not. Let's see if I can walk forward sensibly here. So I'm going to try and record this as one single take without constantly cutting and editing, but time will tell on how successful we are. Because as soon as I attempt something like this, I normally start coughing and spluttering and going yeah we're going to need to cut this clip up into about five different sections and try and pretend nobody can tell there's loads of edit points in it but the first thing that you may be able to notice here from a POV perspective and from a real-time perspective is just how rapidly the valley drops away to the river D below us again if I Pan the camera around, you can see the, the wonderful bont there, the little bridge. Beautiful, beautiful little stone bridge that is, very narrow. And a beautiful property just at the back of it, right on the water's edge too. So, the aqueduct, and this is really ridiculous when you think about it, is now about 220 years old. And here we are, still enjoying it. It's still carrying this huge amount of water every second of every day and you might be able to tell just beneath this grid and this grate here there is actually water beneath the towpath and the towpath itself is suspended on little legs throughout the whole length it's just over 300 meters across and you might be able to tell now as the river is roaring away beneath us that we are reaching the sort of highest point as it crosses the valley. It's, um, I think it's about 38 metres high at the highest point. So again, just stopping here now that we're above the water. You can see there is a spectacular drop off and only about one foot of actual side above the water level on the water side. So again, you can imagine I'm I'm feeling pretty, pretty confident and safe that we've got these railings that come up to almost shoulder height. These are higher than they may seem on camera, so you don't feel like you're going to topple over like if they were at waist height. And I think maybe because the railings are so much higher than you may anticipate or expect, that might make the towpath, which is only about 1 metre and 20 centimetres across, feel even narrower. Now what I'm trying to do now is not raise my voice to 
overpower the sound of the river flowing away beneath us. If I try not to make you all feel dizzy and do these very slow and graceful swooping camera pan movements, you can see. Perhaps you feel every one of those 38 metres of height, about 126 foot. Although, of course, the river can wildly rise and fall throughout the seasons and even from week to week in fact depending of course on uh, how much rainfall we're having although it is extremely difficult I think not to accidentally start shouting having a little lapel microphone actually physically attached to me I'm used to just using my camera phone or the microphone on the camera sorry so I normally have to shout when I get to loud points like this. Whereas, of course, this uh, the magic of my little microphone counteracts an awful lot of that din and noise. So I have uh, utterly destroyed recordings coming across places like this before. And you've got this lovely, gentle water sound in the background. And then me really, really shouting my head off. So here's something that's... I don't know really what you will think about this, but there is, well, for a World Heritage Site, just next to the river, there's what I can only describe as not the most pleasant of uh, features here at the uh, treatment plant or whatever, you, whatever the technical term for something like that is. Now, if we stop to just pan down, Again, obviously, this is still relatively dark. I don't know, it does look like the clouds are breaking, although I'm more concerned of which direction they're travelling and uh, how much rain might be tumbling down on its way to us here. But you can see this open field here, it's got a little railing around it. That was a football pitch, and that is famously where many, many years ago in the snow, I uh, was walking across here with a friend and with this being a beautiful white field of snow some some local kids I'm assuming children had taken it upon themselves to diagonally draw an absolutely giant um, human male part is what I think I've described it as in in the past but it's certainly the biggest example of humorous and rude graffiti that I've ever seen stretching diagonally across a field of that size and of course having something like the amazing aqueduct here it's a uh, well you couldn't get much better of a viewing point and a uh, <laughs> a flat field to to do your rude daubings so as you might have gathered this is this is just a light-hearted humorous single take attempt at least I'm, I'm saying attempt still because i'll be honest i've been recording for about eight minutes at this point and my arm is already aching from holding the camera so if i try and move over to my left hand without making you feel dizzy you can see again even with me walking slightly slower than normal to keep the camera level and to keep walking and plodding along in a sensible steady way that might just about be bearable for the viewer without feeling sick like you're being jostled around it's still a significant distance to walk across like you say about, I think the official figure it's about 307 meters so once again now you can see we've of course got that field we were just looking at we've got all of that distance back to the far side of the valley that we've just crossed again if i slowly move the camera down you can see our lovely uh, world heritage uh, yeah again moving swiftly on from that and uh, in particular just note like you say how low everything is below us there and this ties into what I've said on previous videos about the incredible way that the entire canal around here was built into these very steep banks that the 
edge of the hillside skirting around the contours you can see in fact if I just raise you up to have a look over there you can see how rapidly and how extremely steeply the sides come up to meet us back at canal level it's almost unbelievable to think that even with the locks that interrupt the flow of water along the way there is this incredible continuous flow of this canal water that's going all the way to Nantwich which if anybody wants to uh, google these locations we have crossed the aqueduct the water is coming a few miles downstream from the Horseshoe Falls at Llangothlin again I'll try and make sure I put the spellings in the video description and then if you want to have a look at some of the canal maps and even just Google Maps and then search somewhere like Nantwich you'll see just how far the canal is skirting around the landscape now this is often an extremely dark section of canal as you can tell obviously we've just crossed the valley where we haven't got any street lights but what I find is if you get these little segments of canal that travel between these very very tall trees on either side it is very often a let's think so the best way I can word it and again I'm trying to do this as one single take so please don't judge me too harshly if I'm stumbling my words here before 7am as I try to wake up desperately on camera but if you think if we're in a rural place and on a canal where there's no street lights or anything for a good distance around obviously it's going to be very dark however if you then put trees like this which are not only very tall but of course overhanging the canal on this side to a small extent and this being the tail end of winter you can imagine just how much these are going to fill out with leaves and oh we've actually got a woodpecker somewhere just over here let's let's carry on walking and see whether we hear that in the background but you can imagine how much light these will block out like overhanging bits of branch and tree like this it's amazing just how dark it can be if you're here and it's dark anyway and you're a good distance from any of the light sources say over in the distance there where the um houses of Fion Kasafli are once you've got not only the darkness of night time but also the absolutely wonderful tree covering in the summer completely blocking out any little glimpse of light you might get it's amazing how dark it can be and there's a section of canal that leads from the corner ahead here goes further off down towards Cheek oh yeah we've definitely got woodpeckers or something of that nature in the trees it's amazing how absolutely all encompassing and enclosed the canal can become oh yeah I've, I've only just really thought as we've come in here I was so excited about the uh, woodpeckers that of course we've got the um, the huge amount of dawn chorus and all the other birds surrounding us which again I hope that the microphone is set up correctly so not only am I not just overpowering it with my terrible high-pitched whiny voice but also you're getting some of this surrounding natural sound <laughs> again I, uh, I do dread putting this uh, clip into the editing software and then going oh no I sound really loud and distorted which again with my voice being as squeaky as it is and my uh, attempt to keep everything in a sensible tone and a sensible uh, pitch during these morning hours it's, it's anybody's guess what this will sound like by the time it gets to editing wow you can see just on the far side of the canal here just there and then just there as well got two little water points so if you are passing by and you need to fill up your water tank you can pull over to the side 
and fill up from those. You'll have a little uh, key, I'm not sure what the official title is, used to be known simply as a, a BW key, a British Waterways key, but given that the entirety of British Waterways doesn't exist anymore, I'm not sure what you would call it. And it's something that always, I don't know, it's always fascinated me, and I know that it's got a certain level of interest for other people who don't know about these things, but there are, of course, service points up and down the canals where you can empty toilets, fill up with water. There's even a proper toilet and shower blocks, even. And they all get opened by these simple little keys. And of course, you can imagine in this day and age, there are a huge amount of people printing and creating these keys. So, goodness knows how many I've had. Oh, we've got a, a dog, so we're passing by. Oh. <laughs> but as you can probably imagine, in this day and age, the amount of people who are just randomly cutting these keys and selling them on eBay and things like that. I, uh, I certainly know in the past I've seen any number of um, non-boat related people turning up to some of the rural service points, such as down by the Frankton Locks, for example, about, I'm going to say, six or seven miles downstream from here, although I'm probably completely incorrect in that estimate. And uh, yeah, you'll see like holiday makers in camper vans and things like that turn up, which of course I, I don't, don't endorse myself. Oh, we're catching up to our morning kayaker. So Blue Boat here is one of the British, or well, one of the Canal and River Trust work boats, one of the modern day ones. So you can see they've got that large open empty sort of space there so sometimes you'll see that filled with gravel and all sorts of stuff to maybe fill in gaps in the towpath or wooden beams and logs in fact you can see there just on the uh, towpath side there's actually a couple of beams which i believe came from the edge of the aqueduct itself and it looks like somebody has left a milk bottle on the top there <laughs> Okay, my friends, just a quick edit there. I've just had a brief word of our early morning kayak friend. And as we're zooming out from the wonderful Kefimauer viaduct over there, you can see if I very carefully stand back, got just a couple of examples of the little monuments to the very, very rich industrial heritage of this area. Absolutely love this little uh, trolley here, little dolly, whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, this is a little turning point. I've used this many times over the years on my boats. And now, again, trying to keep everything nice and stable as I'm recording and filming here. See one of my one of my favourite little lift bridges. Not only is it in this absolutely iconic area, but of course, it's got the little pedestrian footbridge, which I don't, I don't know, I just always have really loved it as an extra additional feature. Somebody commented on one of my previous videos saying about people getting stranded, because there are actually houses on both sides of the uh, canal here. Again, look at that. We've got a huge amount of daffodils, another sign that spring is on its way. Although over here, you can see there's a few tufts of uh, where daffodils will be flowering, but they don't seem to uh, have made the rapid explosion and growth that their counterparts just over the canal have done. And here we are, my friends, bridge 28W. This is actually, for the last two years, the first thing and the first place that I've come. Literally, moments after the year has ticked over from one to another, I've made a bit of a, I don't know if I'd say pilgrimage, that might be a bit of a strong word for it. But I've made a very peaceful trip down to the aqueduct and I think the year before last I came and took my photo 
as the, the first selfie of the year with this in the background. Again, it's absolutely incredible, really. Something as simple as a bridge can be such an example of engineering. You can see there's a huge counterweight there. And then we've got a very simple system where on your boat you would have a, a metal handle called a windlass with a cutout shape that pops onto there. As you can see, we've got an old British Waterways logo. And then you literally just start winding. Don't get me wrong, some of them are a bit stiff. Some are better than others in terms of uh, ease of use. But the fact that as an individual, you can turn up on a boat, start cranking a handle and shifting an entire huge chunk of metal like this. Oh, we've got a, a local resident hopped in their vehicle. Again, look at that. Uh, built BWB 1990 Northwich. BWB. I'm just trying to think. British Waterway something. Wow, it's all going on here, my friends. We've got cars coming, cars going. And I think I'm going to just slowly turn around and uh, broadly get out of shot here. <laughs> in fact, I wonder if we can go into this as a, a beautiful example. Let's have a look there. Truncus Athley was the terminus of the canal from 1802 until Pontcus Athley Aqueduct was opened in 1805. There we are. And here we go, my friends. Unbelievably, I've managed to only have about one edit so far. Enjoy your local canal. And we've managed to record for about 20 minutes or so. So I suppose it's only correct that I start walking back to see what any of this actually sounds like in the edit. And uh, get away from the awakening world here. I'm not sure if that uh, car that's just pulled up is somebody who's going to come out and enjoy their local canal, as the sign instructs us to. So they've, they've pulled up into what I'd say is the, the touristy car park. It may or may not surprise you that over the years, and I'm sure it happened twice in one particular season, but more than one car has come down from the car park across the road and find itself in the water here. Luckily not when I've been boating, but it's certainly, a, it's certainly a spectacle, it's certainly an interesting thing to happen. I do apologise my friends, we've got our second big edit since we started doing the walking and talking section of this video, as I, I couldn't help but sneeze just before I did my outro. So I suppose at this point I will simply say thank you so much for joining me for this early morning long form walk and talk video concept test. I hope you've enjoyed it. If not, I at the very least hope you've got neutral feelings and don't absolutely hate what you've just spent your time listening to. And uh, yeah, as always, I'll say please check out the Patreon. There's loads of free stuff there. That's patreon.com slash sort of interesting. So it's not just come here and pay me money. There is loads of actual free content, audio and video there, as well as paid for stuff. Feel free to check my short books about boat life. Find links to those in the description and also links to me all over the internet, posting little clips and photos of places like this. Until the next time, my friends, thank you very much for joining me. Have an absolutely wonderful week. Keep it interesting, keep it boat-worthy, and of course, my friends, farewell. <laughs>